This is meteorologist Mark Molnar with a quick update on the remnants of uh, Hurricane Sandy. Oh, it was Sandy. It's now over uh, Lower Ontario. It's near just northeast of London, Ontario. It's about 994 millibars. It's heading off to the northeast, but uh, it's a f doesn't really not affecting too many areas now. It's not expected to, but it's uh, really walloped uh, West Virginia here with anywhere from 14, 28 inches of snow. I'm watching the storm uh, snow reports move in, and there's been quite a bit of snowfall in these areas. And you can see in Western Virginia, West Virginia, uh, Western Pennsylvania, and Ohio, temperatures are only in the 30s here. So as this uh, cold pool of air sits here and pinwheels around what was sandy. Uh, that'll continue and for the relief efforts here along the coast from Long Island, New York City down to Atlantic City These areas are also dealing with chilly conditions in the lower to middle 40s But we do have a warm front moving into the plains here and We're going to start covering the rest of the United States weather now that Sandy's kind of starting to move out of the picture here We have 70s moving their way into Nebraska the southern Dakotas and down into Texas and you can see the Gulf Coast here. This is where we've had some very mild conditions, up mid to upper 70s with some low 80s in some of the South Texas, Texas areas here. And uh, here's the Northwest. Northwest is dealing with a 990, 990 millibar low here, and it's moving into the Northwest here. Anywhere from four to six inches of rain, and I looked and checked to see if these uh, mountains were going to get any snow. It's not cold enough. So it's going to be actually rain throughout uh, most of the northwest here from Portland, Seattle, Tacoma, over to Medford and down towards uh, Klamath Falls, heading down towards Redding, uh, San Francisco. These areas could see quite in the bit of rain here. And across the Great Lakes, this is where we have the clouds and the moisture. Now, there's something we're going to look at here quick, the precipitation outlook. Uh, the northwest is going to get the lion's share of the precipitation anywhere from 3 to 6 inches of uh, heavy rain, especially along the coast. And then in the mountains here, east of the mountains, that's where the air gets a little drier. We'll only see a little bit. And that will go on for the next 3 or 4, maybe 5 days before things taper off. That's a very strong storm coming into the northwest. I don't have any flood watches at the moment, but there probably will be soon. And here in the east, we're still dealing with the remnants of Sandy. That'll slowly pull out, and it's going to make for a very damp and cool, cold weekend across the northeastern states. And the southeast will continue to bask in some nice, warm, above-normal temperatures. So, do we have anything going on in the tropics? Uh, no areas of interest, and let's take a look at the satellite picture for the tropics. We have a few areas out here in the eastern uh, Atlantic here. Um, it's just south of the Azores and off the Cape Verde, but nothing that's expected to develop. Now, I'm going to show you the long-range outlook here. Temperatures are pretty much where the temperatures are, where you're at across the nation is where they're pretty much going to stay over the next several days. Um, I'm going to show you quickly a GFS model solution. The GFS model is hinting at a possible nor'easter, and this is the one of the titles of uh, this video. Um, is the fact that we could have a nor'easter that follows on the heels of Sandy. Right now the models are trying to uh, resolve it. Uh, the Euro, the ECMWF, is hinting that it could go further offshore than the GFS. The Euro has been fairly right and the Euro has been very good with Sandy, predicting it nearly eight days out. But the GFS will continue to hug the coast and move up through uh, parts of southern New England, eastern New York, eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, just east of uh, D uh, Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, and then heading up towards uh, Maine and eventually Nova Scotia. So that's what the GFS model is hinting at. If we look at the ECMWF here, you can see it takes it just off the coast as a 1,000 millibar low. And if we take a look at the GFS on the isobar uh, view, you can see that it shows it Right, next Tuesday and Wednesday, right over in New York City, is a closed 992 millibar phase low, meaning it phased with the trough to the north as the low progressed up towards the north as well, spreading uh, snow inland to interior sections and heavy rain, coastal flooding, which we don't want to hear, to the coastlines of the northeast on up through New England. So that is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. I want to show you the North Atlantic Oscillation Index. This is used by most meteorologists to determine 
uh, exactly what's going on uh, as far as uh, with the the overall scope of East Coast winter storms. Uh, North Atlantic Oscillation has to do with, uh, let's take a look at 500 millibar uh, heights here, it has to do with this, how much of a blocking ridge there is here in eastern North America and usually a negative NAO which signifies an omega block up here in eastern Canada in the North Atlantic signifies that systems they come up the east coast like this have to bend and then go around it and it intensifies them. It phases them with the northern stream troughs and then together they create massive snowstorms along the east coast and next week the, the weather channel is going to start naming these winter storms and next week we could very well see our first named winter storm by the weather channel uh, next week so keep an eye on this uh, it's not set in stone at this point the models are hinting at it some of the models are backing off of it but the euro and the GFS is hinting that something's going on there and it will continue to uh, uh, affect the northeast at least that's what the long range these are 144 hours out so we'll continue to watch it but this NEO index indicates that uh, here's early November here indicates it's a 0.9 this is very negative this is about as negative as we've been even last winter uh, we were running positive mostly on the NEO which means warm weather and usually lack of snowstorms this so far this heading into November a very negative NAO index indicates that we could have some severe, a, a severe winter storm with lots of accumulating snow across most of interior sections of New England and the northeast and the mid-Atlantic. So we really need to keep an eye on this through early November here and through mid-November. Some of the models are indica indicating that maybe uh, the NAO index will start to bump up more towards zero. Uh, later on in November, but that remains to be seen. We've really been tracking negative ever since uh, actually mid-September here. We've been much below normal on a lot of temperatures across uh, much of the east. So we'll continue to watch this. Um, as far as uh, the system next week, we'll watch that as well. I'd like you to visit my uh, Facebook page. Uh, we're Medio Mark. Like us on Facebook if you'd like to subscribe to our and uh, get our web daily weather feed as well as photos and all kinds of other stuff. And uh, don't forget to visit our website at www.mediomark.com. And uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. Post a comment or a question, uh, either on the Facebook page or on uh, YouTube here. I always welcome questions. I know during Sandy I answered a lot of questions related to individual forecasts that were going to occur as Sandy made landfall. And if you have any damage reports to report from Sandy, I'd like to see those as well. So uh, continue to enjoy the weather and uh, hopefully we'll get a better understanding of this next system that's going to move up the east coast.